Welcome! So, just a quick tutorial here about how you can use an image, te image texture or even an image sequence on the simulations. Here you can see a few examples I made with this workflow. And also, shout out to username Schleifu from Reddit who helped me with this. You can even use it in a reverse fashion as you can see in this example. So here we are in a blender and I'm just going to activate my screencast keys quickly here. So I have already imported this simulation to blender, which you can download from the, from the description. If you want to follow along, I did this simulation actually in Houdini since uh, blender simulation nodes are still in development, but those should be published anytime soon now. However, if you're watching this in the future and blender simulation nodes are a real thing already, I don't really see any reason why this wor workflow wouldn't work just fine with Blender simulations as well. Okay, so let's get started then. You can import your simulation by navigating to File, Import, then choose the Alembic and locate the file you just downloaded and hit that Import. I also have this character from Mixamo which I used as a collider but I'm just gonna disable it for now so we can see the points better. Let's go to a geometry notes tab from here and create a new node tree for this object and I might as well name it as a point cloud. So uh, now we have about 40,000 vertices in our simulation and vertices can't really be seen in render so we're gonna have to turn them into a points. So let's do that by adding mesh to points node this node basically turns our object as a point cloud and replaces every vertex with the sprite texture, which we can see as a sphere in our render. And as you can see from the spreadsheet, now we have zero vertex and 40k points. So because it's not real geometry, it stays relatively light to calculate for your PC. And I think my points are or actually I'm gonna call them balls from now on. Well, anyway, it looks like those are overlapping a bit. So I'm just gonna change the radius, maybe something like uh, 0 0.02 or maybe 0 0.025. Yep, that's it. Then we need to set the material for it. So let's open the shader editor and let's make that. So uh, let's create a new material and I name it as a point cloud as well. If you have node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can just use the shortcut Ctrl T to add image texture as well as coordinate and mapping node. Obviously you can use any texture you want. I'm just gonna use this kind of UV grid texture. And don't forget to add set material node in your node tree or it won't use that material. And now if we set this material in geometry nodes, we should see our texture on those points. Instead, we have only these one solid color balls. This is because we can't really UV unwrap these balls, or should I say sprites, uh, because those are not real geometry. So in texture coordinate, use object-based coordinates, coordinates instead of UVs. And I'm just gonna scale this texture. So while this can be a solution for a point cloud that is not animated, it's not really working for animated ones. So if I inspect these balls more closely here, well, it's a bit hard to see, but you could maybe see that it is changing its color based on its location. And that's because our texture is kind of like projected to the balls right now. And instead of this, we would like to store the color of our every point in the first frame. So for example, if this ball here flies there, it would still be white. So how are we gonna do that? Let's start by duplicating our object. I'm gonna name the other one as an animated.
and the other one as a steel one. And I'm just gonna hide the animated for now and work with the steel one. So I wanna go to the first frame here because those points haven't started animating yet and those points still have their initial location. But you can also use this reversed method and store the last frame data like I did in the car animation that you saw at the beginning of this tutorial. So in my case I'm gonna just apply our Olympic modifier here to make it a still object. I'm just making sure here that it's not animated anymore and looks like it isn't. So now we don't need it to be visible anymore and I'm just gonna hide it and unhide our animated duplicate. And next we are gonna need to modify our geo node tree to get this working. First add a sample index node which let us grab an attribute from the still object and place it to our animated one. Just set it as a vector because we are working with vectors here and we are gonna need to take the attributes from our still object so you can just drag it from the outliner to here. The attribute which we want is the position so let's add a position node and finally let's also add an index node. Connect the geo to geo position as a value and index to index. This index node basically goes through every 40,000 points in our scene. You can also add some math nodes between here, so if you want it to go through specific points instead of all of them. Next we are gonna need to store all this info somewhere, so luckily there is actually this handy node called store named attribute. So let's use our point cloud as a geometry and actually change this as a vector also. Let's connect this to value and give a name for this attribute so we can refer to it in the, in the shader editor. I'm gonna use a fake UV as a name for our attribute and finally feed it through the material node. If we now look our point cloud, nothing really haven't changed so so last step would be going to our material editor and replace the texture coordinate node with the attribute node and type the same name here which you created in geometry nodes and now it should be working as we want. Obviously because these are just sprites we can only have one color on the ball here at least what I know of but I'm not 100% sure so if it's possible to have multicolored balls somehow please let me know in the comments. But there you have it. I'm working on a tutorial how you can create these simulations in Houdini and bring them to the Blender so if you're interested in that stay tuned. Until then, bye!